everybody, and welcome to Occupational Therapy 212, uh, Occupation Through the Lifespan. My name is Melissa Kay. I'll be your instructor. Today's lecture is on the period of adolescence. And uh, this lecture was originally conceived of and presented by my students in 2020, Kate Hatch, Melissa Knuckles, Dennis Chow, and Elaine Rimbin. So thank you very much for that. I'm very grateful for your efforts. I have revised and am now representing this lecture. So let's go ahead and get started. We have three objectives today. Uh, first, to describe the theories that inform uh, adolescence and kind of characterize the different aspects of adolescence. Then we will review development in adolescence across a number of domains. And finally, we're going to discuss a bit how disability and other issues might affect development and occupational engagement during the period of adolescence. So let's go ahead and get started. So uh, I'll uh, ask you to note that um, each of the slides that divides the sections is this uh, peach color. And so if you're looking at the slide deck afterwards and you want to get to a certain point, that's kind of your, uh, your little bit of, uh, of a navigational tool. So our theorists, we have three theorists that we're going to talk about. Piaget, who we've been following and is responsible for um, cognitive development. Erickson and Freud, who we've also been following. So Piaget, we move into our fourth and final stage. And if you'll remember, um, it is not necessary that... Uh, folks of different ages and stages actually go through the stages and wind up at formal operations stage. But uh, in fact, some people never wind up at formal operations. Others do and go in and out of it. So the formal operations stage is from 12 and up, and it is a highly symbolic thought and representational stage. So it's, it's really sophisticated. It appears when the individual has been exposed to complexity and cognitive challenges. So it arises out of this, this idea of brain, whoops, sorry, brain sophistication. Um, Erickson moves into a stage called identity versus role confusion. So you'll, if you recall, in the middle childhood stage, uh, we had industry versus inferiority, right? So the child is starting to develop their own sense of self and also their idea of doing things within the world and having an impact upon the world, upon themselves and their, um, and their people and things and so on. This continues and expands in adolescence um, with Erickson, and it really focuses on identity, and that's self-identity and also identity <clears throat> when you're looking at a, a peer group and comparing yourself against a peer group, um, as well as the separation from parents. So that's a new thing, or caregivers, right? So adolescents are really starting to, to break away from the family. And uh, this will vary very uh, drastically depending on culture, but developmentally speaking, there is a break from parents as adolescents become closer to adulthood and farther from childhood. <clears throat> and then we contrast that with role confusion. So those that do not um, get through Erickson's stage or, or um, are not successful at it have role confusion. Um, and they don't kind of integrate all of the previous stages and enter into this adulthood stage. Uh, it's interesting because I, I uh, have a good friend who has a, um, an almost 19-year-old, 19-year-old, and, uh, and she actually uh, is really, really struggling to, to do that break, right? So that break that signals adulthood. And... Um, in my reading of uh, information about adolescence, in some cases, uh, theorists actually feel like there should be this um, 
this period that's post-adolescence and pre-young adulthood. And it is that period of breaking away from your family and your reliance to being much more self-reliant. And it can be a huge deal for some and not so much for others. All right, enough of that. Our final theorist is Freud. And uh, in his psychosexual uh, phases, this is the genital stage. So along with puberty, which is largely happening in um, adolescence, although for some, the end of middle childhood actually uh, starts adolescence, uh, starts puberty. Um, it's the awakening of sexuality, as I said, and a resolution of the self as a, a functioning sexual being. So it is how our teens relate to themselves and to others is with this um, onslaught of puberty, hormones, bodily changes, attraction, sexuality, romance, all of that. Um, And we'll be talking about that as we go through the lecture. So first up is body functions and structures. We're going to look first to brain and nervous system development. And just as in middle childhood, we started this period of frontal and prefrontal cortical maturation, we continue it and refine it in adolescence. The limbic system, which is responsible for emotions and memories, um, becomes much more highly uh, connected with the prefrontal cortex as well as the striatal system, which is responsible for risk taking. And if you think about your, uh, your typical, or at least your stereotypical teen, um, teens are really into risk taking, whether it's physical risks, um, with extreme sports, um, experimenting with drugs and alcohol or cigarettes, um, experimenting with their sexuality, et cetera. It's a time of high risk taking. And it's actually um, backed up with, um, with this physiological um, evolution that's happening in the striatal system. Uh, it also is the craving of Uh, the craving of danger, right? So motor vehicle accidents and a feeling of immortality, all of that sort of thing figures in with the striatal system and also um, in adolescence. And finally, uh, temporal discounting is the other thing that occurs. So this is a decision-making pattern that's seen in adolescence. It reflects immature executive functioning, so higher level cognitive functioning. And basically, it's about discounting or disregarding the potential long-term implications of their decisions. There's a focus on immediate reward. Um, It can result in things like accidental pregnancy because there's an immediate focus on sex um, without uh, birth control, Uh, crime involvement, low educational achievement, drinking, and then realizing that one has to drive. So all of those kind of, again, risky behaviors are also associated with temporal discount or or time way discounting, the immediate over the long-term ramifications of one's decisions. Physical development also continues into adolescence, and there is asynchronous skeletal growth. So the extremities, the hands and feet, are growing at the fastest rate. There's also rapid bone growth, um, some additional weight gain, and you'll see that um, in some cases, uh, young women are putting on weight and becoming their adult size and, um, and bulk earlier than young men. And then um, this idea of gender differences in growth, which I just talked about. So um, this is probably a good time to mention that there are lots of excellent notes in the presenter notes section. So we try to keep the slides accessible and to have uh, evocative pictures and few words. And uh, be really great if you could download the slide deck. They're all available to you and then reference the presenter notes, both in reviewing this lecture and in studying for the exams. So um, let's see. 
Uh, the males, uh, one other thing. So the average growth spurt lasts for two, uh, two to three years. And the male's growth spurt lasts longer because the official junction um, remains open for a couple of years longer. So the bones take longer to um, fully mature and um, males get broader shoulders, straighter hips and longer limbs. Females, narrower shoulders, broader hips and lean body mass. So you can see it's leaning towards um, adulthood and also uh, especially for uh, for women or um, uh, childbearing. All righty. Um, next up in physical development is sleep. So interestingly, there's an increased need of sleep in the adolescent period. Uh, if a adolescent has sleep problems, they actually get worse. There's a shift in the circadian rhythm. So the adolescent becomes tireder at a later time and Interestingly and frustratingly, high school starts at earlier and earlier times. So you may have a 7.30 or an 8 o'clock bell time at high school, but your body is saying stay up later and shifting towards more of a night owl perspective. Um, there's a need for sleep hygiene, which is helpful for sleep deprivation, and it involves um, developing habits, controlling for the environment, a quiet dark room, maybe a white noise machine, etc., and then other practices that influence the quality of sleep. And we can go into that as much or as little as you'd like. Um, there's a, a fair body of knowledge out there about sleep and sleep hygiene. Uh, so, uh, consider that as we consider our adolescence. 